Yeah, you, you can sit because I think the people want to ask you many things. It's been our pleasure. Congratulations again. Uh, it was a very beautiful experience once more in the big screen. Thank you everyone for watching. Thank you George and the festival for having us. It's an honor to be here. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the movie. Uh, for me personally, and I will make a uh, quick translation this time in uh, Greek. Uh, for me personally, really, and I really mean it, it's top 10 movies uh, personally, because um, I really admire the effort that someone makes even from scratch. Like when you think of it, you start and you say, okay, I'll do a movie that will have no dialogue in it. And this is a very uh, big test for the director. Very big test. And very big test to uh, finish it uh, in the edit room, I guess. So, from scratch, for me, is uh, is an effort, is an artistic uh, uh, finished product that uh, has a value from scratch. Because you do something that is not... Uh, easy at all, you know, it's, it's very, very, very difficult, even with money, if you had the money, it's difficult. Um, so, θέλω να πω λίγο στον κόσμο που είπαμε σε ρωτήσεις, ότι το πολύ βασικό παιδιά είναι όταν ξεκινά στην ιδέα που είχε εδώ ο Σάμιολ, είναι ότι ε, σκέφτηκε να κάνει μια ταινία χωρίς διαλόγους, το οποίο είναι πάρα πολύ δύσκολο σεναριακά ε, και πάρα πολύ δύσκολο για να προσεχτήσεις ε, χρήματα στην Αμερική με ένα αντιεμπορικό ε, project. So, before I go to the um, audience, uh, I would like to ask a very <laughs> uh, main question. How and why uh, did you choose LIDA in particular? Um, so, the myth LIDA and the Swan really attracted me just because I felt like it had a lot of different elements to dive into as far as uh, the pregnancy with a god, and how that translates to modern world. Like, if you watch the film, you can tell that um, I really wanted to paint Leda not only as like a victim of the god, but as a saint in a way, because in like a Christian sense, she would be a saint, so she walks on water, this, that, and the other. But um, I thought uh, the different elements of it, like pregnancy, like uh, the, the sexual trauma, and the god element were all kind of really good food for exploration. And it's also very difficult to find information about Lida online because it's a very mysterious figure. Yeah, most definitely. Point. We we did a lot of research trying to find what was the story behind Lida because I wanted to focus on Lida, not necessarily... Most of the art um, that centers around the myth is just of her experience with the swan. And so it kind of gave us a free range to explore and create our own story of uh, who is this person behind the myth. And let's. Uh, ναι, είναι πολύ δύσκολο να βρείτε πληροφορίε για τη Λίδα διαδικτυακά online, επειδή υπάρχουν πάρα πολλέ πληροφορίε. Και αυτό έδωσε χώρο στο σκηνοθέτη να δημιουργήσει μια δικιά του εκδοχή του μύθου. Ε, και πράγματα τα οποία τον ερέθησαν κινηματογραφικά είναι η, όπω είδατε πολύ, έτσι, η διαδικασία τη εκδημοσύνη, το πώ αυτή η γυναίκα. Μα δείχνει ένα παιδί, βέβαια, αλλά συνέλαβε τέσσερα παιδιά. Όπω ξέρετε, του Διόστρου, την ωραία Ελένη και την Κεμίστρα. Ε, και είναι εντυπωσιακό, νομίζω, που ένα ξένο άνθρωπο ε, επιλέγει αυτό το μύθο για να τον φέρει στην, ε, στην οθόνη. Um, I think going back to making a, a feature film without dialogue and stuff, uh, it was it was very challenging the whole way. I mean, obviously, just having the funds to make it happen was a huge challenge, but story-wise um, and, and kind of just through the creative process-wise was the evolution of it because it, it evolved along the way very much. Um, just trying to find how to make this story work and how to make it stronger and uh, and so it changed many times and how to make it work not only being silent but just um, 
yeah, just artistically make it make it sing. And that took a lot of challenges. We we did a lot of work that we had to just throw away, rewrite it several times. Um, Adeline came on as an actress and ended up being a co-producer and a co-writer because um, we ended up, the two of us ended up really carrying the film to the end and finding what works between you know the performance and also just the story in general. So I feel like also because it was such a long time period, um, it was just hard to try to keep that creative energy going the whole time and also just try to make it a cohesive piece in the end without losing touch with it. Uh, so the evolution, I guess, and, and, and the time itself was a big challenge. Ναι, συζητάμε, ρώτησε εδώ η Αριάδνη, ποιο είναι το μεγαλύτερο challenge, η μεγαλύτερη πρόκληση που αντιμετώπισαν στα 9 χρόνια που διήγησε μέχρι την ολοκλήρωση της ταινίας. Και μας λέει εδώ ο Σάμιουλ ότι μέσα σε όλη αυτή τη διάρκεια, όπως καταλαβαίνετε, οι ρόλοι αλλάζουν. Ο ηθοποιός ε, θα πιστέψει περισσότερο την ταινία, θα φτάσει στο σημείο να γίνει συμπαραγωγό, ε, να προσπαθήσει να αναπτύξει περισσότερο το ρόλο. Ε, πράγματα γράφτηκαν, ξαναγράφτηκαν, πολλές σκηνές φαντάζομαι υπάρχει πάρα πολύ υλικό Μπορεί να ρωτήσει κάποιο που θέλει μετά και πόσο υλικό υπήρχε ε, που έπρεπε να γίνει μια αυστηρή επιλογή για μια ταινία 76 λεπτών. Και από προσωπική εμπειρία σα το λέω ότι είναι πάρα πολλά τα λεπτά γυρίσματων. Πάρα πολλά τα λεπτά. Ε, και μέσα σε όλο αυτό είναι και εντυπωσιακό το τι κάνει έναν δημιουργό να συνεχίζει. Νομίζω θα είναι η επόμενη ερώτησή μου στον Σάμιουλ, γιατί και εμένα με εντυπωσιάζει για τον εαυτό μου. Okay. Uh, Samuel, I, I want to ask you something that I have personally asked a question for myself many times because as a director you know that we are crazy persons but uh, we try to answer some, uh, some things in our minds and I was wondering, you know that this is not uh, always like a movie that will make uh, you a famous person or bring a lot of money. So, what is you think the thing that makes you um, keep walking and keep walking except from the love that you have for the project and the inspiration. What, what makes you want to keep walking in this? Uh... Um, I mean, I think it's, it's probably a sense that a lot of uh, people that might call themselves artists have it. Just uh, have an attachment to the medium of cinema and um, feel like I can express myself potentially through cinema more than um, through words or through any other medium or any other means. So that kind of fuels me. And I also see um, a potential of kind of finding my own voice through the medium. So I hope to and keep trying. And believe me or not, uh, I, will, I think I was having the same anxiety as you when I was watching the movie because I was trying to see what the people believe or speak about when they see the image and I was hearing a lot of oh look at this makeup you know wow like uh, the people were uh, enthusiastic the image uh, the acting I was hearing a lot of positive uh, things and uh, uh, should be really exciting for you to not to understand completely what the people are saying about <laughs> the film. Uh, but yeah that's my answer would you like to answer what keeps you going yeah, I think that the makeup was uh, really fantastic. I don't know how many people worked in it, but it was really, really fantastic. Yeah, we ended up going through several makeup artists, but uh, we had a lot of trouble. So we kept dismissing them and finally brought Sandra in from France, and she uh, she ended up doing all the key scenes and um, really made it shine. Yeah, we talked a little bit about makeup. We had with us Sandra from Galia που διαλέξαν όλα αυτά τα τηλεπτομέρεια που είδατε στα, στα πρόσωπα, στις κινήσεις. I think from shot to shot there was huge like, difference in very tiny details. You could see uh, amazing, really amazing work. Uh, okay, I could keep going on for ages, but let's, let's see what the people have to say. Okay, first question. Ooh. Our photographer. First of all, thank you so much for creating this movie. It was a great honor uh, of us, uh, of hosting it, this festival. Uh, I would like to ask you uh, how much time, uh, uh, how much time uh, 
did you have uh, did you spend uh, in the principal photography of the movie you know the shooting uh, and all of that stuff uh, working with the camera uh, θα ήθελα να ευχαριστήσω πάρα πολύ τα παιδιά που έφεραν αυτή την ταινία στο φεστιβάλ και είναι μεγάλη μα τιμή όλων των συντελεστών. Αυτό που ήθελα να ρωτήσω είναι πόσο καιρό διήρκεσαν τα γυρίσματα τη ταινία και όλη αυτή η διαδικασία με την κάμερα. Ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so, principal photography, it was a total of, I think, 42 days, but Uh, because we had to keep raising funds um, and stopping raising funds, stopping rewriting the script, stopping firing people or hiring people um, because of all the changes. It took just under 12 months, so just about a year of um, Adeline staying in character completely and us trying to just keep everyone involved and not let it fall apart. Ναι, ε, μόνο για ένα χρόνο ήταν ε, το principal του Πόκρας που λέμε, δηλαδή η αναζήτηση σε σημεία, κάποια test shootings, ε, γράψουμε και ξαναγράψουμε των σκηνών, της ιδέας, προσπάθεια να βρούμε κόσμο, άνθρωποι φεύγουν μένουν και η παραγωγή βέβαια ε, να συνεχίζει. Uh, okay, we will keep on with some questions for uh, the director and then uh, I want to pass uh, to the actors, I want to ask also something, but let's continue with the directing part. Uh, I will choose the lady over there. <laughs> Nefelia Kati Katsaru, our sculptor, who made this wonderful statuette. Hello. First of all, congratulations. It was a beautiful movie. And also, I feel a little chill. And also, I like it, <laughs> this chill. Well, uh, I find very inspiring. The, the element of water, of course, but it, it, it is because it, I, I see that the water factions, faction like a veil between the mythical, magical world and the, the true world, reality. I don't know if it's right. This is the first, first question. And the second, it's uh, maybe because my, it's my occupation, but I think I saw paintings in the, inside the movie, famous paintings. Um, uh, like I see Mona Lisa, uh, I see the death of Mara, David, and also the Ophelia in the water. Uh, it is uh, something that comes inside, uh, like a, uh, it's from inside or it was uh, uh, intentional. Έχω δύο ερωτήσει. Η πρώτη ήταν επειδή όντω το στοιχείο του νερού νομίζω ότι όλου μα εντυπωσίασε και είναι πολύ βασικό για την ταινία. Αναρωτήθηκα αν τελικά το νερό λειτουργεί σαν ένα πέπλο μεταξύ του μυθικού κόσμου και του πραγματικού, τον οποίο είναι η πρωταγωνίστρια. Ε, και το δεύτερο, είδα ότι μέσα στην ταινία, πέρα από τις εικόνες που πολλές φορές είχαν την αίσθηση πίνακα, ε, αναγνώρισα κάποιες σε γνωστούς πίνακες, ίσως είναι λόγω του επαγγελματός μου, του καλλιτέχνης, αλλά νομίζω ότι είδα το πρόσωπο της Μόνα Λίζα στην πρωταγωνιστριά μας, σε, ε, σε μία από τις, ε, τα κάδρα τη, ε, τον ε, θάνατο του Μαρά, ενέργο ενός ζωγράφου του Τέιβι, και αντίστοιχα την οφειλία στο νερό από έναν άλλο γνωστό πίνακα. Uh, after that, I'll uh, also, uh, the first thing you describe about the movie, the religion and the, the woman's feelings of all this, it was very, I feel it too, uh, before you say, you passed that in the, in our, thank you. Well, thank you so much, I'm glad you enjoyed the film, thank you for the question. Um, So yes, water was definitely a very heavy theme in the film. Obviously, she starts in the water, attempting to drown herself. She ends in the water, drowning. Um, and I, I think you're right. It does kind of connect uh, her mental states in the reality versus the dream world. But also, uh, we just 
we just kept coming back to water and water is life and all of these things and also the swan lives on water so it, it became like a very visual theme that ran throughout the movie as you notice and as far as paintings we um going into this we wanted this to be you know a cinematic like we wanted to m mix entertainment which cinema is often so uh it's often it's so often viewed as strictly entertainment we wanted this to also be a very artistic piece and also the myth is so often seen in uh, paintings that we did a lot of research with paintings and so yeah you see the direct visual references to a lot of paintings to try to make this film constantly um, just a bunch of beautiful images that are framed as paintings uh, to, yeah just to try to make a visual art piece η ταινία ήταν αρκετά οπτική γιατί όπως είχαμε και στην αρχή η Λίδα είχε να παρασταθεί πολλές φορές σε πίνακες τέχνης. Είναι από τις λίγες μαρτυρίες που έχουμε για την ύπαρξή της και γι' αυτό και τα παιδιά βασίστηκαν πάρα πολύ στην οπτική αναπαράσταση του μύθου, στην κινηματογράφησή του. Το νερό όντω ήταν ένα πολύ βασικό στοιχείο της ταινία που συνδέει και το θέμα της μικρότητας. Um, okay, any other question? Let's go. I will try one. I didn't ask anything yet. Okay. And the man. Okay. 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 Οι εξωτερικοί χώροι που λάβαν το κυβερνήματα για την Ελλάδα και δεύτερον είναι κατά πόσο σαν συντελεστέ και χρήσιμε και σα πούμε πέντε, αν έχετε αποφασίσει την κοινή από την εξωτερική του έργου, κατά πόσο η παρουσίαση του από το πάνω μέρο τη Ελλάδα σα επηρεάζει και θα σα σκέφτε στο πάνω. Okay, uh, he liked the movie very much and uh, he has an interesting question. Uh, did you manage to take a distance from your uh, work while making it uh, and inspired by the myth? Did you manage to take a distance or you were very drowned in it? I was drowning in it constantly for the whole nine years pretty much. Yeah, it was uh, so deep in it, too deep in it, that uh, now it's hard to even watch it. But you still manage to watch it. This is uh, something really... Sometimes when I watch my films that I struggle very much, I only remember the pain. Nothing more like very much pain. That's all I can get, you know, sometimes. Αλλά ναι, λέει ότι πολλές φορές μπαίνεις μέσα στο έργο σου και απλά βυθίζεσαι μέσα σε αυτό. Ναι, ναι. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, any other question? Να ήθελα να ρωτήσω κατά πόσο η ιδέα για τη δημιουργία μια μουσική ταινία επηρέασε σκηνοθετικά, σκηνογραφικά και γενικότερα την αισθητική τη ταινία. Έκανε αυτό το σκηνοθέτη να ακολουθήσει μια πιο μινιμαλιστική πορεία ή επιλούτησε περισσότερο εικονικά για να καλύψει και να πέρασει το μήνυμα που ήθελε για αυτά την ίδια ερώτηση. Κατά πόσο τα ζώα σύμβολα που χρησιμοποιούνταν καθ' όλη τη διάρκεια της ε, ταινία, αν τα ζώα αυτά ήταν η αρχική ιδέα και πάνω σε αυτά στηρίχθηκε το υπόλοιπο σενάριο που, γρά, που γράφτηκε ή αν συμπλήρωναν την αρχική ιδέα ε, του σενάριου. So he asks, he asks uh, if your decision to make it, um, let's say, a movie, like we said, with no dialogue, no uh, much sound, did it uh, impact the movie um, in many choices? Um, 
and also if the animals in the movie represent something uh, more than Yes, so pretty much the animals are every version that Zeus has taken throughout Greek myths. So we see the horse, we see the ant, we see the dove, we see the swan, uh, the deer. Yeah, pretty much every animal in there was a different version of Zeus trying to um, show that he was almost haunting her. Um, and then, what was the first question? Oh, uh, silence. If, if, if the uh, silence of the film impact you uh, in a minimalistic way, like did it make you think more minimalistic because of the lack of um, dialogue or...? I, I think to us, that doing scenes without dialogue um, definitely impacted scenes with more than one character. And I'll turn it over to Adeline for the rest of that answer. That's really important, I guess, but let me first translate. Uh, οπότε, ναι, τα ζώα που είδατε στην ταινία να παραδεστούν όλα ε, ζώα τα οποία ξέρουμε ότι έχει, ε, έχουν χρησιμοποιηθεί στους μύθους του, έχει χρησιμοποιήσει διάφορα ζώα, όπως το άλογο που είδατε πέρα από τον κύπνο. Και ε, ρωτήσαμε για το αν η ταινία, η επιλογή να μην υπάρχει διάλογος, φυσικά και επηρέασε πολλές σκηνές όπου η ηθοποιός ήταν μόνη της, στο πώς το διχειρίστηκε αυτό, αλλά περισσότερα θα θέλαμε να μας πει και η ίδια η Αντελήν Τερή. Αντελήν, how did you work with these scenes when you didn't have any text to work? Yeah, it was great. I didn't have to learn any lines, so... I mean, for me it was amazing. I was, you know, moving around. I come from a physical theater, so I... I um, kind of learned how to create... Um, out of nothing. So, yeah. Yeah, I guess I had to uh, rewrite a bunch of scenes because I guess when you're a director, you write scenes and then you meet the actors and it doesn't really work always. Because you had to do dry many takes or uh, was it more improvisational and what happens, happens, you know? No, we didn't really do a lot of improvisation. It was a lot of blocking because um, this movie also was shot in 3D, which we couldn't see tonight. But it was a lot of. I guess I told you even the idea that Nia is very strict as a 3D. Because we know the camera that was used for shooting was like a 3D. But it was not like the way it was shot in 3D. But it was a 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 3D. Craziest choice, like why did you choose 3D after all for, for such a movie? Uh, it's challenging as well. Um, just because I was a little bit of a nerd with 3D, and I thought it'd be cool to try to explore depth as another visual storytelling element. And as the the concept behind it was, as Leda starts to lose touch with reality, uh, the visual reality gets deeper, pulling her away from her surroundings and the other characters. I wanted to add an extra level of experience in the story of 3D when Elida had made some changes and how that is changed. I wanted to say that there are some changes in the camera after that. You have to see everything more than just the shot. Yeah, so it's really hard to explain that. Yeah, 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 it's really hard to explain that. 3D. With the 3D? Yeah, yeah. So with the 3D, basically, we shoot with two cameras, and on set, we're going to, to, to define the depth. And we basically, with the script, we wrote how deep each scene is, and as it gets crazier, it gets It's deeper. like making two movies in one, right? It's 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 like making two movies in one, right? An extra uh, difficult uh, thing to do in, uh, in such a move. Uh, okay, uh, I would like now to take any questions regarding uh, the protagonist, regarding Lida. Uh, Lillian. Very congratulations. I would like to ask the protagonist two questions. Ε, ποια σκηνή ήταν για αυτήν ε, 
περισσότερο ε, περισσότερο συγκίνηση αρκεί, ποια, όχι πιο δύσκολη, ποια τη συγκίνησε περισσότερο, ποια έχει μεγαλύτερη συναισθηματική φώτιση, πρώτη ερώτηση, ε, και δεύτερη ερώτηση, έχει κοινά χαρακτηριστικά η πρωταγωνίστρια με την ηρωίδα που υποδείχθηκε. Thank you. Do you remember any specific uh, scene that was maybe more emotional for you while playing it? And the second question, I'll ask you. Sure. If you remember. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of the scene in this movie is really, uh, really hard. Uh, but probably the palm scene was uh, the hardest. And also, she, she wanted to ask um, if you find, like, it's a common question, I guess, like, if you, if you find uh, common things between you and Lida in the end, like, uh, if you find something. I mean, I created, I created my own version of Leda, and um, she wasn't really fucked, so, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, it's difficult. Uh, the scene with the Geekner was very interesting, and yes, he found the Leda, because the same was very interested in the writing of the role, and that was the idea that I gave you a lot. It's a very difficult day, I don't know what I said. Θέλω να πω ότι μου άρεσε πάρα πολύ το έργο. Είναι πολύ καλογυρισμένο, ονειρικό, ονειρόδραμα. Ε, είναι τραγικό πολύ. Η κοπέλα διαρκώς υποφέρει, φαίνεται. Ας μην έχει λόγο, ε, βγαίνει πάρα πολύ η υπόθεση, πάρα πολύ καλά. Και αυτό που ανακατόρατε παρελθόν με παρόν, το έχω δει τρεις φορές φέτος στο κινηματογράφο, στον Αϊνστάιν, στη ζωή του και στον Πικάσο. Παράλληλα να παίζει παρελθόν και παρόν. Το κάνατε και εσείς το ίδιο αυτό. Ε, θέλω εγώ σαν Ελληνίδα να διαβάσω, το έχω ακούσει τα παραμύθια τους μύθους, αλλά να το διαβάσω, να δω πόσο έχετε φύγει από την πραγματικότητα, αν τηρήσατε πολλά, βάλατε πολλά μοντέρνα στοιχεία, πράγματι δεν ξέρω αν πλήγετε στο τέλος, ε, ότι υποφέρει πάρα πολύ, είναι σαν ψυχωτικό σαν η κοπέλα αυτή να έχει ψύχωση με το γύπνο τη σήμεναν οι αρχαίοι Έλληνες τη λιγάκι ψυχίατροι περισσότερο μπορούσε να μας το πούν. Ε, δεν τη συγκίνει και το παιδί που έκανε, φανταστικά έστω στο οπό και πνίγεται στο τέλος. Είναι λίγο περδεμένο το θέμα, τώρα οι αρχαίοι Έλληνες όλα τέτοια είχανε ε, με τον Γερνό, με τον Δία, με εκείνο, ε, κανέναν παιδιά, ε, είναι λίγο... Α, είναι αλληγορικά όμως όλα αυτά. Πρέπει να ξαναδιαβάσουμε τη μυθολογία μας. Ευχαριστώ πολύ. Και αν το παρουσιάσατε καθόλου στην Αμερική ή κάπου αλλού, νομίζω όχι ακόμα, τι απήχηση είχε. Ίσως να αρέσει, είναι και μια υπόθεση, ας πούμε, πολύ περίεργη και... Είναι πολύ καλογυρισμένο το έργο. Ευχαριστώ. She also liked the, the film very, very much and she made a lot of allegories uh, regarding the movies. She said uh, the ancient Greeks sometimes were also like psychiatrists, like uh, she makes uh, babies, she doesn't really want the baby in the end, uh, or she's bored with it and she gets drawn in the end, who knows, um, and many other um, things that uh, maybe we as Greeks, we understand a little better because we we grew with these myths, you know, but we grew really close to them because of the theaters that you have in this area, you have four. And uh, she was wondering, you, are, you already played the movie in, um, in the US and uh, in, uh, in Sydney, Australia. Uh, what were the uh, reactions of the audience there? It's, so far it's been very well received on the whole. 
Um, it, it's definitely a film that needs to find the right audience, but uh, the programming that we've had so far has had those audience um, in mind, I guess, or, or in, in seats, at least. And, uh, but I do think that we don't get comments like this and such. It's, it's much more seen as the myth is a background element, maybe just a launching off point, and most people aren't even familiar with the myth, honestly. Like uh, an artistic film, uh, just imagery and... That's all. Pretty much, yeah. Maybe they, they've heard of the myth or, you know, they'll you know, know something about it afterward. But for the most part, it's seen as, as a standalone artistic film about, uh, about this woman, not necessarily with the background knowledge. Yeah, I guess uh, for me it's uh, not really a question, but something to notice about that it's, um, it's something that the actress or the actor has to take on its own after some moment. Uh, um, you have to regard on the actress. You can do control everything you have to base on it and uh, even though it may be very good in the world in the world in the world in the world in the the world in the world in the 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 um, and I think, uh, for me personally, it was the right moment to connect uh, with, uh, with something like this because uh, I was never really expecting that someone would do a movie about that. I was never even expecting, uh, you know, uh, for someone to think about it because it's a very strange subject and a very, even if you want to say the word. Um, controversial subject. Because many people stay on the thing about raping or whatever, you know. Yeah, especially in Europe. It's, it's very open. I, I want to say that Greek people is very open interpretation, so you can't know. Right, whatever. definitely. And I mean, I think a lot of those themes are still extremely prevalent, obviously. So we wanted to explore that, but we also, as much as the Greek influence is there, we wanted the, the film to live on its own. That's why we didn't make a period piece set in ancient Greek time about the myth. We wanted to make it kind of this dreamy, nondescript timing that is relatable but can live without knowing about the myth um, for another viewer if they're not familiar. Yeah, uh, Γιατί η ταινία είναι βουβή και δεν έχει χρόνο. Και επίση γιατί η Λίδα μερικέ φορέ εμφανίζεται χωρί φρύδια. Ε, γιατί ε, δεν θέλει να δείξει τα συναισθήματά τη ή επειδή είναι η σκέψη τη ή η γυμνή τη καρδιά τη από αυτό. Σε άσκησα από τα artistic choices, like uh, why did you choose to make the movie black and white? Uh, why the protagonist sometimes uh, changes her face? Is it something that she hides or she doesn't want? Or whatever? What was the last part about the, changing the face? The black and white choice, yeah. Okay, well the black and white choice is the same as the setting choice um, to try to kind of just immediately remove it from reality and let the piece be somewhat of a, a dream piece. Um, so, yeah, that's yeah we already talked about sometimes that when you shoot in black and white, you you have to notice more in some other details rather than the color. I think that the idea of the astronaut is to be able to do it in the not have the chrome as an epiroid. And of course, all of these epiroids are going to be the protagonist of the protagonist. Like one of them is going to be able to do it in the same way. Like αλλά και γενικά με πώς αντιλαμβανόταν αυτό που συνέβαινε. Άντερ Κόστιν. Είναι αυτό που δεν είμαστε. 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 Είναι
Tapi nak, tapi nak, tapi nak. Uh, did the choice of uh, black and white uh, help you in any way? Uh, um, yeah, I mean it simplifies a lot of things. You don't have to worry about colors so much. Uh, so that design, costuming, and everything kind of gets a little simpler. Uh, maybe Sandra. And also Sandra, yeah. yeah uh, how did you work with uh, black and white? Was the, was the film uh, any challenge for you uh, Black personally? And white. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so, uh, in the coloring uh, matters, yeah, you don't. Then it is not for the film coloring, but for the police, it's the name from me. Then it's for the Julia to come at the But I, I do have a point, though. Like you said, infrared. Um, all of the dream sequences where the leaves are bright white, uh, all of the dream sequences we shot in infrared photography. Yeah, uh, Irini wants to ask, uh, was the movie with the water real, like the actress had to uh, keep her breath in the water so much time, or, or not? Yeah? You tortured her. <laughs> like me. Yeah, she, there was uh, a lot of water. We actually went to a pool one day and she was practicing holding her breath. A lot of underwater work. A lot of stunt work and underwater work, for sure. Ναι, ήταν αληθινές σκηνές και έπρεπε πολλές φορές να κρατήσει την αναπνοή της uh, κάτω από το νερό. Ναι, ναι, ναι. Like a mermaid, yes. And, yeah, and the last scene, there's actually, she had to hold on to a bunch of weight underneath to hold herself under. Ναι, και στην τελευταία σκηνή υπάρχει και ένα βάρος που της κρατάει τα πόδια χαμηλά για να πέφτει. Ναι, ναι, ναι. Guys, uh, I think the film made a great impact here. I, I am always hearing uh, good uh, uh, things wherever I, I ask, and uh, I hope the movie finds the right audience. Like you said, it's very important for the people to understand it and or to feel it. And uh, again, I want to really, really thank you for coming here, for honoring us. Um, the festival is about it anyway, like it's, it's this, and uh, uh, we will have more time to talk because I will take ages to ask you more things, but anyway, I don't want to waste your time, you're tired. Uh, if you want to say anything uh, freely, you can make a statement or... Yeah, I just want to say that the honor is really all, all ours. Um, and to be here after all this time and to be at a festival uh, inspired by the same myth and in the homeland of Leda. It's a uh, homecoming I never expected for the film. So it's really uh, it's really special for us to be here. And I also just want to thank again Sandra and Adeline because they're two of the people that this film wouldn't be what it was without. And it's, it's special for me as well because I, I'm not from here. I, I came uh, uh, some year before and I knew the myth, I knew Leda, but uh, I never knew that she was from here and finding out that there is a place that she was supposed to live before uh, departing from for Sparta. So there was a, a big, uh, huge rock that was the palace, and then she had to leave for Sparta with uh, Tindareo to marry him. Uh, so it was also something for me, even before uh, we, we discovered this movie. Uh, we'll get to talk more, I guess, about it. Uh, I hope the next one is as good as this, because I think you reached a very nice milestone for me, like it's really perfect in every sense. I, I couldn't find anything to say like uh, less and I would like to make a critic about it, like to say what I believe because I think this time you see something new. This is a film. You see more details and more stuff that you can't really uh, get at first sight. It's, it's really astonishing. Um, ευχαριστώ πολύ παιδιά όλους που, που ήρθατε, που μείνατε να παρακολουθήσετε την ταινία. Um, 
Είναι μια τιμή και για το σκηνοθέτη, δεν σας ευχαριστεί πάρα πολύ. Είναι σημαντικό γι' αυτό να έρχεται στον τόπο που ο μύθος γεννήθηκε. Και ελπίζουμε να τον εμπνεύσουμε και με περισσότερους μύθους στην πορεία. Something really small from us, like a thank you, is not really something great. A statue of Lida for you, from Nefeli. Nefeli, do you want to come up? You can bring the original as well. Έχουμε μαζί μας τη γλύπη για την Εφέλη Χάτη Κατσαρού. Η Εφέλη made the sculpture and she is gonna bring the original as well. Uh, because this is a replica of it, it's not really the... Uh, and the small certificate for our dear actress and the director. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, this is an inspiration by Nefelis, he's uh, great at uh, combining things. You can see both the uh, swamp and the character in the same... Uh, Just coming from Athens. Okay, you can check it out. You can hold it. It's the first thing that came to our mind when thinking about this ceramic. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny how some people can come together because I met her uh, accidentally, but we are very similar in aesthetic. So immediately when I thought about it, I thought Nefeli could do something like that and nobody else because it's combining many stuff and also it's, it's everything that's about, for me personally, about the, the character. Uh, yeah. Crazy art, Nefeli. Thank you very much. Having a Leda prize for Leda <laughs> is incredible. This is something so new. Thank you so much. <laughs> this is something new. Uh, and uh, tomorrow we'll speak about we're going to visit the place I told you, the palace. And okay, thanks everybody. Avrio Pali, this October hora, the monologue of Leda. Θα είμαστε εδώ, σε ευχαριστούμε όλους πολύ, με νέες ε, ταινίες, νέους μονολόγους και μικρούς μικρούς ταινίες, 8 με 12,5 περίπου τη νύχτα. Σας ευχαριστώ πολύ.